Today we're going to talk about our heavy duty travel control valve linkage upgrade. What the benefits are, how it functions, etc. What comes in our kit. So first let's just show you what comes in the kit. Is right here. This is the new heavy duty linkage upgrade that's adjustable. It's got heim joints and ball ball joint, um, heim joints, rod ends. There's your original design here. And it's flawed from the beginning, but it's very simple. You've got an inline ball joint that wears extremely uh, fast and that has play in it from day one. It's adjustable here. This is what the new one looks like. Right there, there's a slight a bit of amount of play in there. I don't know if you can see that, but as soon as you start using this, it's just wearing right away. It functions, does a trick, but not the best design. And what happens over time, you'll find your tractor is jumpy to engage in forward and reverse, or you may have more forward speed or more reverse speed. And that's because you're getting play and wearing this linkage. And initially, a lot of people think that the play comes from here, and it does. I don't know if you can see the amount of play in there, which probably is a 16th, if not a little bit more. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot. And I'll show you why. Let's see on here, too. This one's got a ton of play. Okay, so you get this play here on these ball joint ends. And as you go to pull or push, you've got that play that's not doing anything. And as soon as it grabs the valve, then it gets jumpy. And then you also pick up a lot of play on these ends. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a groove worn in there. If you can hear that, and that's probably close to a sixteenth of an inch too. So between this and that, you're at least an eighth of an inch. All right, and then that's what a a newer one looks like. This one's still got some wear, but I don't know if you can see the difference or not. Side by side, up top. But there's a lot of wear in there and this one's worn some too i don't have a brand new one to compare to and then so the next place you're going to get some play is on your lever this is the lever that goes up through your dashboard and you control your forward and reverse and then this hole here i don't know if you can see all that play you see all that play back and forth right there? There's at least another 16th there. So now we're talking an eighth plus, maybe 330 seconds. Maybe on real worn, you've got even more. This one is also used, but it's in. In a little better shape but now you can see this one in there I can barely move it big difference I don't know if visually you can see the difference in the holes here or not but there's a big difference. These were the same size to begin with. To give you an example of what it looks like on the machine to play, this is on the wrong spool. This is your travel spool, but this one moves easier on this valve. This valve needs some work. So here's the play. So now I'm pushing on it. Nothing, nothing. Now I got resistance and it goes. Come out. I'm pulling on it. And you have that, that play there. So this lever is moving that much before it engages. And that's where your jumpiness comes from. And also some of your forward and reverse difference in speed. So now that you understand that, I'll explain this a little bit more to you and what it does. So you eliminate any play here. And this is the end that goes into your travel control. We put a bigger size ball joint rod end here. And that takes up the slot that's in your lever. So some, I'll show you, these are the same size. They're 5 sixteenths. But I'll show you on the lever, well, the levers again, just for a visual. So when you're dropping this, this in here, 
it won't go through this this one this is a pretty new low hour machine one okay where these fall right through now on the sloppy one which is going to be common to most people's and i have some hours on it of course we showed you this falls through with our new end which is the same size as this it doesn't you might have to open this up here some some drop right through depending on worn you are others you have to take a file a ream or a small drill bit a dremel tool and open it up but once you do this is in here tight and you got a nice fit there's zero slop unlike this thing that's all over the place and then this won't wear like the rest of these do because you're going to nut and bolt you're going to take the nut on here and tighten it down and there's no play where these are just held in by a cotter pin and they walk around all right the next things in the in the kit that we supply is an oil impregnated bushing the factory ones are nylon they wear very quick and where this goes is on the bottom of your lever um, there's a cross member bracket on there that holds your steering gear and the steering shaft this sits on a recess and the the nylons wear very fast and then you get play with the shaft here inside this bushing that all contributes to the linkage of your travel control so we put this new oil impregnated metal bushing in there and that'll last you a lifetime and then up top through the dashboard this is what supports this big long handle so this is what a new factory one looks like we have an upgrade that's a little thicker a little more heavy duty it does stick out a little bit through the dashboard so if you don't like that you can trim a little bit off there i don't even know if it's quite a quarter inch but if you want it to sit flush it's really not very noticeable they are white instead of black unfortunately but it's a heavier duty a little bit more support if you keep the length in there which is the purpose and this is a simple install you you knock your roll pin out up top where your indicator is for your on your dashboard you knock the roll pin out and then you just slide this over and then down to your dash and then there's no play here so we get guys that want the factory one and they buy it and put it in and it's a much better improvement they're still not happy it's because this only this fixed this but you still didn't fix all your wear problems on your rods on your bushings top and bottom and then the hole here so to do the job complete you need these two pieces and this so this is a factory piece is Kaysinger saw number C44383 that we replaced right here and then this bushing is a is a upgrade from part number c27593 so it replaces that and then these are two pieces here now the install and adjustment on these is pretty straightforward it can be can be time consuming depending on your tractor your model your year how much stuff's in the way or it could be fairly quick we'll show a video but it's easier to show you on the bench real quick how this all functions so this end gets threaded in here and the easiest way to do that is just pull this pin to start with you want to take your old one and you want to roughly match up the length and to adjust your length you spin this longer or you spin it in to make it shorter lay your pin on top and your ends and you're worried about this length here so this one's got to come out a little bit you can see that or not probably not but anyways that gives you a rough idea then take your jam nuts and just put them on as space markers thread this side all the way in all right now you're roughly the same length as the one that came out this will get you started pull this pin out this is your travel spool here thread this in by hand bottom it out again you're going to be doing this on the tractor this just makes the demonstration easier on the bench for you to understand 
your big spool, big lines is your travel. Okay, you thread that in by hand, you put your wrenches on here, you tighten your jam nut up, and your spool. And then you put this end in the travel lever. This nut comes off. Make sure you got a lock washer. Okay. And this side is going to come through here. Obviously, we got to open that one up a little bit. You're going to want to put your lock washer on there, your nut, and tighten it down. We haven't opened this one up, so it was just for demonstration, but you can see how much of that's sticking through. That's how worn that hole is. It shouldn't go through on a new one. But make sure your lock washer is on there for demonstration purposes. We take that out. And then you're going to take your clevis pin, push it in. Put your cotter pin in and you're going to lock, bend it over and now what you do is you jack your rear end of your tractor up put it on jack stands do everything safe practice and you want your lever up top that's through the dashboard with the roll pin comes out here it's at your forward and reverse this just should be set in neutral and then your spool should feel like it's in neutral start your tractor up again make sure it's jacked off the ground safely and the tires shouldn't be spinning forward or reverse. If they are, then you do your adjustment here. I'm going to back this off since we just use that as a space saver. And you're going to spin it one way or the other to fix your, your problem. Because if it's a new revert, if it's in reverse and it's going forward, then you're going to have to change, change the direction and you're going to have to shorten it, I, I believe. So then you shorten this up and this should be bringing your wheels to a stop. If it's going in reverse, then you want to lengthen this, I believe, so your wheels don't don't go in any direction in neutral. Then you're going to want to, same thing while it's jacked up, all the way forward and all the way back. And make sure you're hitting the stops. It's hard while it's on the tractor, but you see that just that's it for a tiny little bit of play uh, movement in this spool, so... With all these things added up, if you're losing an eighth of an inch on this short amount of play in here, all it moves is from here to here, essentially. You're losing a lot. And then I can show you on here, this style here has snap rings on the front and on the back. And these are essentially, let you know, you're... you're bottomed out so right now it's a neutral you got even distance here and here if this is your style this valve again is messed up but just to show you for demonstration purposes so when your when your lever is all the way one direction all the way in reverse this should get pulled to where that stop the snap ring stops it can't go any further so you always want to make sure your lever is pulling that it should kind of line up up top where your dash indicator marks are for forward and reverse, but if it's not going all the way over, it's not quite as important. So long as you're hitting these stops, that's an important part, and neutral is neutral. And then when you're forward, again, that's it. It's on the snap ring. That's all the travel you have. So as long as you're getting travel full both directions, and it's close up top in your dash, that's all you need. And as long as when you're in neutral, it's not going forward or reverse at all because it'll be dangerous. Again, all that adjustment is here. It's fine thread. A turn or two goes a long way when you're doing this because, as you've seen, there's not much play or not much room in this spool. This allows you to alignment to be off a little bit. Also allows it to wear or compensate for wear that's already there. You have a little bit more motion this way as well on this ball joint end. Where you don't with this style. So that should be at least a simple explanation to get you guys in the ballpark of getting this thing adjusted. The first thing we did is, if you can see, this panel was 
here. Most tractors have it. The earlier models don't, so it's going to make it a little tougher. There's usually two or four, sometimes three bolts. You remove it, disconnect your wires for your voltage regulator or rectifier. So the one on the left is for the travel control. That one there. The one on the right shadowed a little bit, but that's your lift. Um, the rod going to it goes from this lever here into your travel control valve. There's a cotta pin right here. It needs to come out. If you move your lever into forward, sometimes it gains you some better access. This one right here. On the left side of the tractor, make sure it's control, controlling your travel and not your lift. Alright, easy enough. There's a washer on here. Take the washer off. And this linkage should theoretically drop out pretty easy. Like that. Alright. Now... There's your, your travel control rod. On the top here, right here, there should be a spring connected to the brake pedal. Some people remove it, it's not on this tractor. But what that does is when you're pressing your brake pedal, it pulls your lever into neutral. Some guys like it, some guys can't stand it, but it's a, it's a nice feature, especially in a panic step. You go to hit the brakes, you're not fighting the tractor, when it's not coming back into neutral. This plate down here is going to have to get loosened up so it can drop down and we can get the bushing that's, you can't see it, but it's right in here. Right, right where that cross member is, there's a spring. The bottom of that spring, I know it's hard to see, there's a nylon washer bushing and that's got to get replaced because there's a lot of slop and play in that. Also, these two bolts here hold the cross member. There's two on the other side. A lot easier just to take the footrest off. This tractor is one, one bolt, different years, it's going to be different. It's usually a half inch. This just slides right off, and we'll use 9 sixteenths for these cross member bolts. This tractor's got a sleeve hitch on, that's what this is all about. Uh, this one's gonna want to fight. Use a wrench or take that bar off. Show you how to do this, but this bushing, oil impregnated bushing, we include with our kit, has to go on the top side of this bracket, cross member. So, therefore, this lever that's connected to your forward and reverse up top has to get, well, up, but the cross member actually comes down. And then this gets slid between the spring and the top of this bracket cross and burn if you can see but it is notched out so you've got some room to work. Uh, it's not going to be a good way to show you how to do this but you just kind of maneuver it with some bars. Sometimes it's more tricky depending on how much play you got up and down here. Some tractors got a lot, you got a lot of room to come down. Um, sometimes you, you got to remove the steering column to, to do it. Oh, and uh, sometimes a lot more than that depending on the model and so I wish there was a better way to show you but just gotta manipulate this with some bars and and uh, kind of make it do what you want hopefully all right for some models to, in order to get this lever for the travel to come up high enough you're gonna have to re loosen up this heat shield which we already did it's a bolt here bolt here on both sides Take your solenoid off, which we already did. Take your battery out. This firewall shield comes right out. 
and then now you can move your hydraulic tank forward and it's going to be hard to see but sorry down in here there's a piece of plastic which is called your neutral safety switch and there's a rod that rides on there that's welded to the lever there's going to be two nuts and you have to loosen those nuts up and take them right off usually you can get a flex head uh, ratcheting wrench in there or super long uh, 90 degree needle nose pliers you can hold on to them either way and you got to be able to pull that plastic piece out and that will allow the handle for the travel control to move up that much more so you can get that thru uh, lubricated washer bearing space or whatever you want to call it bushing on the bottom of this rod that goes across the cross member bracket this has still got to come up be able to or come up some more rather so you can get that we're talking about down in here hopefully you can see that little plastic piece there's a nut uh, it's really hard to see but there's that nut right there I already got this one off over on this side. There was one on this side. Got these flex head tectin wrenches. Any flex head will work, but these are nice tectin wrenches. They work good, very affordable. We have all kinds of tools here. But this will, this will get down in there. Get on that knot and get it off. You can also try to come up through here with some wobble sockets, quarter inch drive wobble sockets or universal sockets. But that's how you do it. Bushings on the bottom of that spring. This lever here has to come up a little bit more. We've got this crossing over all unbolted here. So it'll slide forward, back up or down to some degree. Well, remember, it's still connected to the steering wheel and the steering gear, so you're only going to have so much play without taking that bottom steering gear off. As you can see, we've got this cross member loose. It'll move. Here is the shaft we're trying to push up out of the way, and at the same time bring this down so this will come out of here out of the nylon washer that's on the top of this and then we can insert our bushing on the top but now we got to go take a neutral safety switch which is located underneath the dashboard on t on the uh, back side of the dash then we just remove the firewall to access it so I wanted to show you we got the rod out of here and keep in mind you don't have to take all everything apart like we did on this one sometimes you do sometimes you don't we took off your lift linkage it gave us a little bit more room to flex this plate and it helps if you got two people but what we did is took a bar or a screwdriver and pressed up on that spring and somebody from the up, up top pushed forward on that if you can see it now the nylon washer and got the shaft out this washer here is what we're replacing. So now, hopefully you can, you can kind of see what we're doing here. Not a lot of room to show you, not a lot of room to work. All right, now that shaft dropped down, there's the nylon washer. All right. Now you're gonna wanna clean up the bottom of the shaft the best you can some brake clean and paper towel watch your eyes obviously anytime you're working around anything and underneath things all right there's that spring you don't want that spring to drop if you can help it this one's not too dirty and grimy not too too bad there is the new metal one that comes in the kit I'm going to take this, it's hard to do with the camera in one hand and no tools, but get that up there. And there's a groove 
Uh, I probably should go around and show you. That groove down in there. You can tell or not, but it's recessed for the washer to fit in there, so you can't use any old washer or bushing. It's got to be the right size. It's recessed, and this new bushing fits in there. We're going to clean that out, too. There's the new bushing on. Use a little pair of pliers so hopefully you can see, but get the bushing on, work the shaft in there, go around top, make sure that bushing's sitting where it needs to be. And it appears so, as you can see, it's right in there, the bushing's in there, there's no slop in there, and that's that part. We're going to address this top bushing right in here. And you see the play in there. This one's not horrible, but they get a lot worse than that, but that still adds to your problem. So it's the plastic bushing in here. So first we're going to take the roll pin punches, knock out this roll pin, and then we can put a new bushing over here once we remove the handle. As you can see, the roll pin is now removed. The handle is removed off of here. You want to clean this up a little bit. First we need to get this old one out. Usually you kind of either cut them with a razor knife, pry them out with a screwdriver, whatever you got to do. Uh, a pair of dikes sometimes and uh, work these out. So to get this bushing in, you can push down on this lever because there's a welded rod on the back side of this. So you need to push this down, center that bushing. And get the bushing, the new bushing centered as good as you can, and then a pair of needle nose or regular pliers, not going to take much, and then just tap it in with the hammer. And you got a nice tight fit. Then you want to take your roll pin and then make sure you're positioned in the right spot. Come in, he's got a, a beveled edge usually. Bevel edge goes first. Tap the roll pin. The roll pin just for an indicator. And we do sell longer roll pins that go up here. Some people like them. They're stainless steel. All right. But the, this bushing up top is now in there. And there's no play. The bushing down below is in there. There's no play. Now you just put everything back together. See this? So, this is the travel control forward reverse linkage we're going to be replacing with our heavy duty kit. So, this is a half inch on here, most of the time they are. And this is usually 7 16 but I've run into some different sizes. This you just hold. This is one we're concerned about loosening. loosening. You don't have to worry about this because we already have it disconnected from the lever that goes down through the dashboard. Angle wrenches will help in here sometimes, but not necessary, but they do make a huge difference. If you don't have angle wrenches, you definitely want to get a pair, especially if you're doing any kind of hydraulic work. Uh, these are Tecton. They're incredible. They're made in the USA. I've got up to an inch and a half. I think they make up to two inch from, uh, now it's quarter inch, three sixteenths, all the way up. Same thing with metric. The uh, important thing about these is they're 30 degrees and 60 degrees. And if you have angle wrenches that aren't 30 degrees and 60 degrees on the heads, they're useless. Uh, a lot of the cheaper angle wrenches are 15 degrees on one side, which is what your standard wrench is, usually 15 degrees. So by adding these, you uh, pick up two more, more different angles to get at things. They're actually uh, recessed a little bit in here too to get around hydraulic lines or other obstructions. But uh, well worth the money. I think Snap-on, to my knowledge, is the only other ones that make a 30 and 60 degree wrench right now. And you just back this all the way out. This one's got a lot of crud in it. You can feel that sometimes you can get them to the point where you can almost spin them out by hand. And you want to make sure you're on the travel control, which is the left side if you're sitting on the tractor, but it's the one with the, the bigger lines going to your drive motor. And this one's for your lift circuit. Um, We've had people put our heavy-duty linkage on there, not necessary, but uh, doesn't hurt, obviously. 
but on your travel, if you're trying to correct your problems, your speed problems, your jumpiness, and want something you're not going to have to ever mess with again, the heavy duty linkage is the way to go. You want to make sure this rod's free, free, free to and not bound up on something as you're backing this out. So, sometimes this hole is pretty worn out. We give you a little bigger size stud on this end than what this hole out of the factory is. You may have to ream this out with a file, drill bit, dremel tool, die grinder, whatever have you. Or a lot of times it will drop right through because they're so worn. This one's going to have to get worked a little bit. As you can see, it won't go in. But we'll just have to open that up to 5 sixteenths. I'm going to take this and try to get it as straight as you can. There we go. I said open it up a little bit. Or other nut. Just get this started good. You know, crank it down right now. Alright, now we're back under here. Alright, now that we got the clevis off this piece, this is going to go in with the jam nut already on and a lock washer. Thread them on until the bottom's out. Alright, grab a half inch wrench. Just go by hand. Sometimes there's just stuff in there. You don't need to go crazy now. screwdriver in there. Whatever you need to do. These threads are a little junky. Normally you can get these all the way in by hand or pretty close to it. I'm going to say it's pretty close to bottom down now. And this model has snap rings for stops. Some don't, some new. So you can tell how far you are for forward or reverse. Oh, that would be all the way forward. Now you can see the distance here and here. It's off, so you need to lengthen it. And do your lengthening on, on here and not necessarily here. jam this up here then it'll, it'll spin the rod on the back. It can be a little tricky to get it these adjusted. Alright, I'm going to say it's pretty close there. Oh, I'll have to move the lever from up top sometimes to get it to line up. That's why we keep this one off of here too because it lets you do what you got to do. Sometimes there's a hose going right here directly. This one's got a PTO added, so this hose has been added. It's not really the right hose at the right angle, but that's what they did. Let me see you turn it to see where you are. There we go. 